Hi guys, I'm Tracy and welcome to today's video. So this is a, a little impromptu video, just looking at the feedback that I have from my previous video of my favorite rougher brushes. I wanted to put a little bit more content to show you guys the other brushes that I have that uh, some of them I really like, some of them not so much, but because something is not my favorite doesn't mean they're not going to be yours. I'm also going to be comparing them to their um, other brands comparable brushes. So, um, you know, in case you were maybe eyeing a Hakuhoto brush, but you're not willing, you know, to pay that price, I'm going to show you the refer equivalent, or I'll show you the... Um, the equivalent to the rougher brushes I have, if I have them, or the closest thing I have. Okay, so you guys get what I'm trying to say. All right, so let me start out with one of their most popular brushes, and I'm also I'm doing face brushes and a couple of eye brushes. So the number five, I I believe when I got this, this was their most popular cheek brush, and it makes sense. It's got that classic paddle shape. It's slightly tapered, but not too tapered. Perfect for blush and bronzer. That's what I use this for. And it's also very, very similar to the Hakuhoto B110, which is now known as the J110. And this is Hakuhoto's most popular blush brush. And if you look at them side by side, they're pretty much identical in design. And the um, Hakuhoto is just gonna be a little bit softer because that's pure goat hair. This one's got a little, it's a little bit coarser. And for me, it's got more snap because I haven't used this one as much. I've used the Hakuhoto one way more, but I think if you were eyeing this one and don't wanna pay um, the price, this would be a good time to, you know, maybe get the number five for free if you're, you know, getting something else. So that's the number five. If you don't have a lot of brushes, I think this shape is essential. This is my favorite shape brush to buy. It's the shape I have the most of, and they're just so great for, for doing blush, also bronzer. It's not too dense that you can't buff. You know, for me, I don't like buffing too much because I feel like it removes my base makeup, but um, yeah, it's a medium density and I think very useful, especially if you don't have a lot of this paddle shape um, blush brush. I'm going to talk about the Refer 19 and this type of brush is something I would use for under eye powdering. Now I really haven't used this a whole lot because for powdering I prefer a dark haired brush because I can see the powder um, you know, much better. But, um, you know, if that is not a concern for you, I think this would be a great um, targeted powdering brush for like under the eye. I like this shape because it gets it really close to the lash line. You can also turn it on its side and do highlighter. So those are the two things I would use a brush like this for. And the most similar brush that I have that I can compare it to is the Sonia G Designer Pro. But the Designer Pro, um, obviously it's dyed and it's smaller, but I would use these the same way. So I use this to powder and highlight. So it's, I'll show you guys that side by side by side. Not really that similar, but in my collection, the closest thing I have to the Ruffer 19. All right. The number 24, I believe, at least when I got this, this is their most popular bronzer brush. And I did use this a lot when I first got it. Now I kind of, you know, retired it for now, but this is good for someone that likes to kind of go in heavy with bronzer because it's a pretty dense brush. So if you're someone that likes to lightly build, um, this one is not going to do it for you. So um, I would use it like this. And it's also good for like contouring with bronzer because of that shape. For me, it fits into these areas really well. But I wouldn't buff with this. Just it's a little too dense for, for my preference. So I would definitely pat like this for blush. But I would say this is probably better for bronzer because it covers a pretty big space. And yeah, for my shape face, it's, it's perfect for that. But um, I prefer a less dense brush for bronzer, but that is the 24. I'm gonna show you a comparable brush shortly after I talk about the Refer 22. Now, I know this is Michelle Wong's favorite bronzer brush. It's much bigger than the, the 24, 
which uh, sometimes it's hard to see that online. So I wanted to show you guys the size difference. The 22 is a monster of a brush. It's supposed to be um, a dupe for the Tom Ford bronzer brush, but or the powder brush. I don't have any of those, so I can't say. But so just keep in mind the 22 is a very, very large brush. For me personally, I wouldn't use this to bronze. I prefer a medium sized bronzer brush. But if I wanted to kind of warm up my complexion in a very subtle way by putting like a, maybe a powder that's a little bit darker than my skin tone and kind of getting it all over, that's what I would use this for. I used it a little bit earlier for, for bronzer here, but it's just not my preference for bronzer application or powder application. I just prefer smaller brushes. But I'm going to show you the, um, the Koyuto equivalent to these two. And that is the Koyuto BP13. This is a very popular brush. They call this a foundation brush, although I don't think, I don't think any of these are good foundation brushes. If you want to use them for liquid cream foundations, I think it will come out great. I mean, I've, I've used the, all these for, uh, I've used these two for foundation and they come out fine, but th this type of brush will soak up a lot of product. So that's why I stay away from this type of brush for foundation. But if you don't mind that, I think it'll work fine. Probably the 24 is better for foundation, but yeah. So if you're eyeing the Koyuto, that is right between the 22 and the 24. So yeah, I think the Koyuto, it was a bronzer brush for me for a little while, but not thought that it's still, this is still a little big for my preference. So those are the three, this is the closest thing I have to the 22. And um, yeah, this is just not a, a size that I generally go for. But if you want a large bronzer brush, the 22 and if you want something a little bit smaller and more specific then the 24 would be better for you all right so this is the second to the last brush and then i have an eye brush i'm going to talk about the refer 30. now i was really excited when this one came out i actually requested them to send it to me and they were so kind to do that meanwhile i got the hakuhodo j509 which is really in in identical in in design and shape and density and they actually feel pretty much identical so if you're looking for a large powder brush from Hakuhodo like the J509 or the J104 then the refer 30 is a very very close dupe so uh, a lot of people like this brush like these brushes but for me personally I just don't like a large powder brush and I also don't like a brush this dense for setting or finishing powder. It just puts on a little bit too much um, powder for me. If you have oily skin though, it might be a good idea. I have slightly drier skin, so I try not to powder unless I absolutely have to. And when I do powder, I use like, you know, something like this to just powder specific areas. But if you are someone that likes to really lock in their foundation and concealer, you know, make it sweat proof or then a brush like this would make sense. So I just wanted to show it to you guys because these are very, I mean, very, very similar. And I think if I were to close my eyes, do a blind um, test, I don't think I can tell the difference. I can usually tell between the refer and the Hakuhodo, but... In this case, I can't. This might be pure goat hair, I'm not sure. A lot of them are synthetic mixes, but this one feels oh, it feels pretty soft. And I haven't actually, I really haven't used this one or this one much at all, but um, I did want to show you guys the 30. Then I'm just gonna go over two eye brushes. I got a request to review the Refer Eye Brush, the 32. And this is another brush that I have not even used because this shape is just not something I'm drawn to. It's, it's not a shape I've really learned how to use. So it's a pretty angled, um, you know, medium width, completely round ferrule eye brush. And if I were to use it, I would probably use it for to like, you know, get a darker shade here. Or I would, if you know, if I was in a pinch for time, use it like this to do liner. I think that would work okay. Uh, I have so many liner brushes. It's just not the way I would prefer to do my liner. 
but I think of the different eye brushes, this one probably has a little bit more functionality because of the shape, but I don't, I don't want to give too much feedback because I just, I'm not familiar with this brush, but I did want to show it to you guys up close, give you an idea of the size and, you know, the feel for it. It's pretty dense, not super, super dense, but on the denser side, it's actually really, um, beautifully crafted. A lot of times these angled brushes, they will come out a little lopsided. So that is the 32 and I don't have anything to compare it to. I apologize for that. And then one more that I have a comparison for, and I actually do recommend this brush. It's the rougher number two. It's their, um, I think it's their first like packing brush or not packing brush, like a builder brush, you know, something that will, um, you know, deepen out your lid or like the lower lash line just to kind of bring more pigment um, to the eye area. I personally don't like this type of brush to build, um, build up shadow, but I do like it for lining. It's a very fast way to line the lower lash line. It's not going to give a super um, precise or a super intense um, application. It's going to be a little bit of a thicker line and a, and a slightly more diffused application, but you know, sometimes I like that. So um, that's what I would use this brush for. And the brush that I have that's pretty similar is the uh, the Sonya G Builder 3. So they look fairly similar. The Sonya G is dyed and it's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit, it's like a millimeter longer, I think, but very, very similar. So if you're eyeing the Sonya G Builder 3, I think the number two is a pretty good alternative, but it would depend on how you're using these. I use this to line, so it's pretty much the same as this one, but I can't speak for using these to like build up like a, um, a shimmer shade or anything because I just have other brushes that I prefer. And you know what, I'm gonna talk about that one really quick. I did go over this yesterday because it's one of my top favorite refer eye brushes and that's the 21. Let me show you the 21 next to um, other comparable brushes that I have. I have two of them that look very, very similar. One is the Hakuhodo J242HS, which is made of horse and synthetic hair, or, or just horse hair. This is one of my favorite, all-time favorite um, packing brushes. It's one of the first ones that I ever got, and I just really love these. I have a few of them in different sizes. <clears throat> Another one that it looks very similar to is the Hokoto GS5. This is actually made of Kalinsky hair. So, um, you know, these are all made of different hairs, but I think they perform very, very similarly. They're all really good at providing a very um, intense application. You know, if you really want a shimmer or, or metallic formula to really pop, I think these are probably my top choices. And they're, they're mid-size. So for me, it's just small enough to fit on my eyelid. Anything bigger would be a little bit hard to use, but I think the 21, you know, if you're going to take advantage of the sale is a really great choice for someone who wants a really intense um, application of eyeshadow. You can also line with it. I used this, the 21 today to pack on the shimmer and I also used it to get the shimmer on the lower lash line. I went over that well yesterday, so I'm not going to go on too much about that. Okay, and those are the ones I wanted to go over. I have some others. I just didn't want this video to be too long, but um, for those of you that have been um, replying and commenting on my previous video from yesterday, thank you guys so much. I'm just so touched with the um, reaction and how um, appreciative a lot of you guys are of that video. So I'm really glad that it's helping, helping you guys out. Um, make better choices. So that's really all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.